Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here as we uh, take a look at Hurricane Matthew today. The eye of Hurricane Matthew getting very close to the eastern side of Grand Bahama Island. You can see it just is just moving steadily along to the northwest uh, and it's getting ready to take aim to South Florida later today. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, somewhere between you know, maybe around Cape Canaveral, Daytona Beach, uh, Melbourne, right in that area, uh, is a possibility of landfall. Uh, but this has really become uh, a well-defined hurricane overnight, a well-defined eye formed, and the pressure has fallen, has been falling rapidly all night long. The winds have picked up, uh, top winds are 125 miles an hour, and the pressure continuing to fall would suggest that those winds could uh, continue to increase further. There's room for more strengthening between here and the Florida coast. Wind shear remains light. Uh, the water temperatures are up in the upper 80s, so there really isn't anything uh, to stop it uh, from getting even stronger. So don't be surprised if this winds up coming on land as a Category 4 hurricane. Certainly it will come on, on land as every bit of a 3, and I think it has a shot to becoming a Category 4. Here it is on the wider view, and you can see a tropical storm, Nicole, to the east, kind of uh, uh, acting as if it's a brick wall here, so it's helping to reinforce the uh, ridge that's driving this northwestward, and uh, it also is going to play a role uh, in uh, Matthew's future uh, over the next several days. On the um, wider view here, when we look at it with perspective of the northeast, Matthew has now come on to the picture. There's Nicole about... 600 or so miles to the east and the clouds off the Carolinas you'll notice they're shooting out northeastward so you know this is going to be the general track here as it continues to move northward and then when it gets up into northern Florida it's probably going to start the right turn and more than likely starting a, a clockwise loop uh, looking at what's going on to the north this is the upper trough that's coming out that uh, is going to miss Matthew it's going to pass uh, by to the north, and uh, Matthew is not going to get picked up and brought up the east coast by this. When we look at the weather models from the overnight, I'm going to start with the European model tonight uh, uh, that, that ran overnight. And this is the European uh, for this evening at 8 o'clock. It has Hurricane Matthew right on the coast, uh, probably right around uh, Pompano, near Pompano, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, with a uh, pressure a little bit higher. Now, this is the model's view of it, so I don't know. You know, the models have not had a good handle in terms of the actual pressure. I think um, to say that uh, Matthew um, would lo uh, weaken a bit between now and landfall, it would be great if it did, but uh, because, you know, you know the, we want, um, we don't want major damage here. This is a major hurricane. Um, he's going to threaten, you know, to be life-threatening. So if it winds up weakening a little bit, so that that'd be a great thing. Uh, but I thinking that maybe the models are just doing their own thing from whatever numbers were put in. Bottom line is, it's almost a Cat Four, or there may very well be a Cat Four by the time it goes to land. And then from there, the European takes it right up uh, near Jacksonville, and you can see it here. It's just about moving off the coast. The European last night is a, was a a shade, a little bit weaker with that trough, just a little bit. We're talking about very minute changes here in terms of strength, trying to make a difference uh, as far as the long range is concerned. And then after that, uh, it has it uh, east of Charleston, south of Wilmington. Whereas yesterday, it took it a little more to the northeast as it started to do its loop thing. And here's Tropical Storm Nicole, which the European actually strengthens a little bit. So that's probably going to have some sort of a play and a hand in, in the future of uh, Matthew's track, which on the European model was to do that right turn and do the um, clockwise loop. And the overnight model run came in to be more like the GFS was and has been for the last uh, four runs, which is a, a tight uh, loop uh, around. And this is now by um, Monday night, Matthew sitting east of the Bahamas, uh, it actually crosses the northern Bahamas and then starts to turn northward in response to this next upper trough. And then from there, uh, it slides out to the northeast because that trough is rather weak. 
Uh, we don't have anything in the upper air on the European that would suggest um, Matthew could make a turn and then move northward. If we look at the uh, upper air, this is a weak trough in the southern stream that's coming along. So here's that first trough. There's Matthew. Here's the first trough. It's just about even with Matthew and well to the north. The westerlies are from northern Virginia on northward. Uh, these where we ha This is where we have the uh, strong westerly winds right here. And here's the trough. And the Matthew is there. So it would have come through the Bahamas all along, along or just inland of the Florida coast. And now it starts that right turn. So you, if, if, if this were further south, it would be picking Matthew up. But it, it just doesn't appear that it's going to be far enough south. And here we have Tropical Storm Nicole. Um, so if it wants to turn east and go straight east, it's going to run into that. So uh, it, Matthew has a lot of things in its way uh, and, and having a hand in its um, its future. And as we go forward, so now we're here, we're here into Tuesday, Monday night, I'm sorry, Monday night. And here's our jet stream to the north. And there's this upper high, this ridge is building. So Matthew is forced to move uh, down to the southwest as it makes that loop around and makes total sense. And remember, we also have Nicole is still here uh, out to the east. Whoops. And um, there you go. And that's going to be uh, the, uh, the block through all of this uh, to keep Matthew from moving uh, eastward. And there's that next trough now. This, we're now into Wednesday. Matthew is, Matthew is here. Nicole is here. Okay, and here we have the next week trough. We still have a bit of a ridge here in the east. So Matthew's going to begin to respond to that trough as it moves eastward. And when we uh, go out one more frame, uh, you can see it on uh, day nine and day 10. Now that trough, again, very weak, but it's gentle and it's there. And it's just enough that at this point, we have strengthening west-southwesterly winds aloft. And with Nicole now not really in the picture, as that is probably has moved away to the, the east, I think, um, we see this uh, taking off to the northeast. So, you know, all of this seems to be following some sort of logic during the overnight runs. Everything seems to be lining up. So we'll take a look now at the GFS. Now, of course, the GFS is going to have, um, it's, it has a similar view to a point. Uh, and then after that, um, they, they diverge a little bit. You can uh, see it here on um on the upper air, <clears throat> this is for uh, to, uh, for for Friday. Uh, right, a lot takes Matthew right along the coast, then does a much tighter loop. He kind of loses it in the upper air here, but at the same upper air structure as the European, they're very similar. And then it gets picked up, although it, it leaves Nicole still somewhere out there. And we'll look at the surface on the GFS, which is a little bit different. So we'll take a look at that and. Let me punch it up here. So let's back up. Let's just back it up. So there's there's the GFS surface. The GFS makes a much tighter loop and actually brings it all back over South Florida again, uh, although in a weaker state. And you got to remember that it's going to be coming back over upwelled water uh, that's going to have been cooled by at least three or four degrees. So that's going to make a difference in strength. And then uh, into the uh, Gulf of Mexico while Nicole is sitting here and, and Nicole is drawn westward uh, also to, to a certain point before it gets kicked out uh, to the northeast. So the models, they, they both do the loop, but the difference is that the GFS wants to continue taking Matthew into the Gulf of Mexico down toward the Yucatan Peninsula, which would be um, pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, the U European instead kind of brings it to about this point here in the Bahamas before it, it takes that next trough in the southern stream and kicks it out to the northeast. I mean, these are all subtle differences uh, that, you know, one little difference here, one, one uh, little short wave trough that shows up that's not there can change the whole profile of the upper atmosphere over a large scale. Um, as far as the Northeast is concerned, uh, we're just going to be in good shape here. I mean, there might be a couple of showers going by on Saturday as the uh, as a cold front goes by and, and, and maybe gets a little bit of activity enhanced from it. Uh, but I'm not going to uh, lose sleep over this uh, because we're not getting the hurricane moving up the coast. And then a big high builds in. So the weather 
uh, through uh, Sunday and into next week. Looks pretty good. Bit of an onshore flow develops, but you know what? It looks bone dry. And one of the principal hopes from uh, Matthew for the for the area from central and northern New Jersey uh, through southern New England, including and especially including Long Island. Um, and also including the Hudson Valley, is the severe drought that exists here and actually also exists even further north into New England and up through parts, much of upstate New York, that Hurricane Matthew would have come up the coast as some sort of weakened hurricane or a strong tropical storm or perhaps make a transition over to a post-tropical storm and we would have gotten uh, some really much needed heavy rains. But unfortunately, uh, that is not going to happen and it looks like the weather is going to be mostly dry across the northeast for at least the next week and possibly for the next two weeks, uh, given uh, the pattern that we're in. Uh, it, it's not really until um, day 11 that you get the first shot of precipitation uh, in the Northeast with any kind of cold front. So it's really sad because we do have the drought and it's also uh, it's, it's upsetting that we have this major hurricane that's heading for the Florida coast. Uh, heed, uh, if you're watching, Heed the recommendations of local officials on on, on what you should uh, should do, uh, depending on where you live near the coast. If you're inland, um, please uh, uh, heed their advice. Uh, don't fool around with these things. Uh, the, you, you know these uh, Category Four hurricanes are, can be life threatening. Uh, they certainly are life threatening, and they can be extremely destructive. And you know what? You can always uh, you can always fix things, but um, everything is fixable. But um, you know, don't don't gamble on your life. If there's any doubt, go inland. If it, if it winds up being uh, you nothing happens, be happy because I've never really quite understood why some people get mad at weather people when apparently you know <clears throat> in a situation like this they they don't get the destruction that they thought they were going to get. Which I never that, that's that's what they sound like they're saying to me, and that makes absolutely no sense. So have a great day. Uh, we'll uh, update these uh, a little bit later on as we get uh, some uh, more model information and we'll be posting on the websites. Don't forget ssstormchasers.com. We'll be, um, take, uh, be in the storm uh, as it uh, moves along the coast, uh, bringing uh, pictures uh, to you of uh, what is going on. Uh, and also uh, the latest weather is on my website, meteorologistjoechoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com, and nycweathernow.com.